Today we're going to go over the pressure transducer calibration. The first thing we're going to do is apply some thread sealant. In this case we're using Loctite 567. It allows you to take it off afterwards with some hand tools. You don't need to apply very much and you just need to spread it around the whole thread. Once you get that applied, now we can screw it into the top. You don't need to use any hand tools from this, just get it hand tight. Okay, now we're ready to use the Druck machine. So we're going to hit Calibrator. And we're going to get a swipe right here. Hit Calibrator again. Now, if your pressure transducer uh, has an output in milliamps, you're going to hit this first one, which is milliamps 24 volts. But if your pressure transducer is a voltage output, then you need to scroll down more. So there's two choices for voltage. You can either have volt just by itself, or volts, volt output 10 volts. So the volt output 10 volts selection is for when you're using the druck output to power your transducer. You can only do this when your transducer takes excitation voltage of lower or equal to 10 volts. In this case, this is excitation. This transducer has an excitation voltage above that, so we're going to use just pressure volts. So now we select that. It takes a little bit to load. So now we're set up, we're going to hit this top part right here. And then we're going to hit the gear on the bottom right. Now we're going to go scaling, which is the lowest option there. And we're going to go down to measured value 1. So your measured value 1 and measured value 2 is your output on your transducer. And this transducer has an output of 0.1 volts to 5.1 volts. So Measure value 1 is going to be 0 0.1 volts. And that corresponds to 0 psi, so that's good. Then measure value 2 is going to be 5.1 volts. Alright, and that corresponds to a pressure of 250 psi since that's the max on the range on this transducer. So now we hit that check mark, and now hit this checkbox to. Otherwise, this will not apply to the actual test. Alright, we're good there. So now we're going to hit this bottom left corner. And now we're going to go to the bottom section. And hit the gear there. And we're going to go to units. This transducer is in units of PSI, so that's what we'll be using for this. Let's see, scroll down. And there's PSI. So we're going to select that, hit the check mark, and go back to this screen. So now over here we can set up the electrical section part of the test. So first thing to do is have a power supply if you have an excitation voltage over 10 volts. So we have a power supply here, we're going to make sure it's off before we start. And the next thing to do after that, after you have a power supply to actually power it, so look up the manual of your transducer and see which wire corresponds to input and output, uh, positive and, and negative of each. So for this transducer, red is a positive input of the transducer, and that comes from this power supply right here. The uh, power supply is red's part right here. So we're going to hook this up. So that's hooked up. Now the negative part is the black wire on this one. All right. Okay. Now the output from the transducer goes directly into the drug, as seen here. And the red is the positive input into the drug or output from the transducer. So we're going to hook that up to the green wire in this case for this one. And the negative output of the transducer is this white wire. So we're going to 
plug that into the black part on the on the truck. And as you notice on the truck, the left side is for inputting into the truck, and the right side is for output out of the truck. So if you have the transducer has under 10 volts, you can use this these two uh, ports right here to use your to extract your voltage. All right, and we're pretty much ready for the test, so we're going to turn on our power supply. Now you see that uh, the top section jumped from negative 5 to 0.5, and that's in PSI right now. So now um, it's having a measured voltage, so we know we correctly did that. Um, so next we're going to use our screwdriver to take off these uh, small screws on top of the transducer. So we're going to screw that real quick and just take it out by hand. All right. And now we're going to use this small screwdriver right here. Now, you kind of just want to go into these little holes that opened up from the screws and find there's very tiny screws inside that you need to turn. And once you turn these, you can adjust the voltage output from the transducer, which will adjust the PSI measurement. So these can be a little bit hard to find, so just get in there and try to run around for them. And I can't seem to find it this time, so we're going to skip that section. And the next part is to close off the, out, the air exit on the truck. And you just need to turn both these knobs on the right side. Now we can pressurize the truck. So we're going to pressure up to under the maximum uh, range of the, the tr pressure transducer. This pressure transducer goes up to 250 PSI, so we're going to max out at 200 PSI. And this shaft has uh, the has more output for the pressurization than the wheel does. The wheel is more more for accuracy, and this one's more for quickly pressurizing the truck. Right now that we're up here, maybe we'll use this wheel to go down a little bit to get closer to 200. There we go. So now we're at about 200, and we're going to adjust the second hole on top of the transducer. I'm going to go down there and find the screw, and you want to get um, you want to get the measurement on top, close to measurement on bottom, probably within 0.1 psi or a little bit less than that, maybe. Um, you just need to get it close and to where it's good enough, basically. Um, once you complete that, you release the air from the truck by unscrewing these right here. So now we're back down to atmospheric pressure. All right now that we're here, we're going to adjust the zero screw on the transducer once again. This will show a different uh, pressure measurement than the first time around. And that is due to adjusting the, the line that is made from uh, the ratio from voltage to pressure that we did. So we need to do this uh, a few inter iterations of this to actually get the right measurements for both. Um, once you finish that, uh, then you're good to go.